I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm at the Burnham on Sea Caravan and Motorhome Club site with this brand new French low profile. It's just under seven metres long and it's got a rear lounge. Doesn't that sound under seven metres long? Rear lounge, French? No, this is Pilot. I was here, well not here, but at a different site with a Rapido under seven metres long. Luxury, sort of 60, 70,000 pound price tag, rear lounge. Hmm. Are the French going to start putting gravy on their frite next? I wonder what's going on. What are they putting in the wine? Whatever they're putting in the wine, they seem to have come up with quite a fine looking motorhome. 6.99 metres long and on a three and a half ton Fiat chassis. Although you can upplate that to 3650 kilograms if you want a bit more payload. It's on the latest Fiat Ducato Series 8 Fiat, as you'll see in a minute. And well, this is the P696U Expression. Now, Expression replaces Essential and Sensation in Pilot's 2022 range. These are the models that you can spec according to your taste. So you can choose different upholstery, different colour schemes, different options packs and different accessories. Now, the reason this one is an Expression is because uh, Devan Caravans in uh, Western Supermare who supplied this vehicle wanted to get this new pick P696U layout before anybody else. Most people in the UK are likely to buy it in evidence trim. Now evidence, as we saw earlier in the year with the P626D, the evidence version gives you lots and lots of extra kit. This expression has been up spec to evidence level in every way apart from this one's got a manual gearbox and evidence has come with automatic, the nine speed automatic gearbox as standard. Prices start for an expression at 56,900. Spec this one up with all the toys that this has got and you come to just over 66,200. However, if you buy an evidence, that's 64,500, including the automatic gearbox and with all the toys that you see here, including the awning, the alloy wheels and all the rest of it. So as you can see, it makes much more sense unless you absolutely must have a manual to go for an evidence. And that's, of course, how UK dealers will normally order them. But let's not get bogged down with what you don't get, let's have a look at what you do get, because it's quite a lot for 64 and a half grand. As I say, you get those 16 inch alloy wheels, the 140 engine, you get the awning, 100 watt solar panel on the roof, and then let's take a look down the side. Well, your habitation door has a nice deep window, it's got a fly screen as well. The electric step goes in automatically when you start the engine, and most importantly of all, perhaps, the habitation door is linked to the central locking. Moving back, reasonably sub substantial rear overhang, and then you've got this access point into the under lounge, under settee space at the back. Now that goes right the way across the vehicle. It's 360 mil tall, um, but there is only this door on this offside nothing on the near side. So if anything slides across, as it will of course, then you'll have to get at it from inside. And if you do get at it from inside, well, then that reveals another trick. And you might have wondered why, if the hatch, if the, if the storage is only that high, why the door is that high? Well, that's because, as I'll show in a minute, you can remove the settee cushions off the back part of the lounge, lift the bases, and then 
have a much taller storage, bikes or whatever can go in. Now, as I said, when we were talking about the exterior of the motorhome, you can turn the rear under seat locker space into a sort of garage. And well, headroom now is pretty much unlimited, but you do have rather a lot of cushions that you have to store somewhere. And of course your bikes are sitting in the middle of your lounge, next to your seats perhaps something to use very occasionally. Looking at the back, well, you can see that you get these framed windows all the way around the vehicle, and you've got your reversing camera built in at the top there. Of course, looking at it from this angle, you can see that it is quite a long rear overhang, although I had it at uh, 70 miles an hour on the M5 yesterday, and it did feel quite nice and stable. Your gas locker is here, and in usual pilot style, that will take two 13 kilo cylinders. And then forward of that, you've got this skirt locker. Um, unfortunately, the, the mains lead does drape down in the way slightly, but it's not really a big issue. And then that pulls out, you've got a lidded compartment that will take up to 70 kilos. And that's an ideal space for your mains lead, levelling wedges, all that sort of thing, in a nice out-of-the-way compartment. And lastly, before we go inside and see what this pilot is really all about, let's just mention the water. Fresh water infill there, 130 litres inboard under the offside sofa. Waste to water tank is under floor, but it's heated and insulated, and it's emptied with a T-handle just under here. Very simple, just pull that out, and it empties quickly and simply. Easy to use. Great. Come into this P696U, and they've even given you a little seat to sit down and take your shoes off. Once you've taken your shoes off, you've got a cupboard in which to stow them. So as well as this novel seat, you've got somewhere to hang your coats when you come in, you've got a magazine rack, you've got a grab handle to uh, help you haul yourself back in, a bin on the door, and then some neat little storage in this entrance area too, under the seat and in this locker here, perhaps somewhere to keep all your walking stuff. All very convenient. And I quite like this little area, it's, it's different. And then also in this space, you've got your trimmer boiler control above the door. That is, in this model, a six kilowatt, six EH, so gas and mains electric heater. And on this side, you've got Pilot's expression control panel that gives you water levels and all that sort of thing, battery condition, and shows you that we're hooked up to the mains and that the solar panel's giving us a little bit of input as well. All those little details up front would be about as much use as a king-size chocolate bar when you're on a diet, if they hadn't got this rear lounge right. It's a traditional U-shape, and look at it, it's big. And I don't mean big as in brochure speak, I mean really big. You could get seven people around here, no trouble at all. And not just seven skinny little supermodels, seven real people could sit here. And they'll be comfortable too. The sofa on this side is 2.16 metres long, that's over seven foot. It's equally spacious across the van too. And, well, the table doesn't really get in the way because it folds in half. When you want to dine, you just pull out the support panel, fold it over, and then, well, table slides and twists and everything. And you've got, well, space for a proper French bit of gastronomy. You've also got, I think there are 11 downlighters set into the drop down bed above, you've got two rear speakers, you've got neck curtains, but the best thing of all is that you've got big windows all the way around. This feels a lovely, light, spacious place to relax. 
If you want to watch telly, you could put up to 32 inch TV on that bracket on the wall. You've got pleated blinds and fly screens on the windows. But, well, I just want to sit here and enjoy the view. Maybe the Mediterranean or the Alps. Hmm. There's not a lot of other storage under the settees because most of this side is full of the fresh water tank. There's just a little bit of space at the forward end. And over on this corner is the combi boiler. But that's not all this lounge can do because it's also got a couple of other tricks up its sleeve. Now, the very eagle-eyed amongst you might have spotted these headrests in the external locker. Now, just slot in and then remove these middle cushions. You'll notice that all the cushions click into place because you've got magnets. So, when you come to that first roundabout, you don't suddenly turn your motorhome into a pile of cushions. Now, you've got two rear travel seats, one forward facing, one rearward facing. However, I would caution that anybody that uh, is prone to a bit of motion sickness might not like sitting right back here where you're a very long way from the cab and both seats are behind the rear axle. It might be a bit bouncy. Of course, this lounge also makes into a bed, and it's surprisingly easy. I just get the table in the right place. These legs support the table extension, which you flip over. And then it's just these two backrest cushions go in the middle. And if you remove the backrest cushions from around the side, you end up with a bed that is a very generous 2.15 metres by 1.4. Completely flat, of course, because it is made of quite a few cushions, but better than a lot. And this is only your occasional bed. Of course, your main bed is in the ceiling above, but before we can lower it, not only do we have to have the table lowered, as we did for the other bed, of course, but we've got to get rid of all these backrest cushions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do I count eleven? I think so. It's a good thing that you've got plenty of space in the cab, which you don't really use on site, to store all those cushions. But making the upstairs bed is just a matter of turning a key and pressing a button. And then down it comes, and you can stop it midway at any particular point and use the lower bed as well, making this a four berth motorhome with double bed above double bed. But I reckon most people will use it most of the time as a two berth. In which case, down comes your bed, right, 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 right down to seat height. And then, access is lovely and easy. You've got a little seat here at the side, take your socks off. And, well, what a big comfy bed. Bultex comfort mattress, reading lights above in the ceiling. Measurements, two meters by 153, so it's a really good bed if you're tall. Yeah, this is one of the Pilot's strong points. So we've covered the lounge and the beds. What about the galley? Well, you've got a removal cover over your sink. You've got a Thetford duplex combined oven and grill. Nice big cutlery drawer. Bigger drawer for your pots and pans down below. There's another little drawer under the oven there. Decent sized top lockers. 
little shelf for uh, maybe washing up liquid, a few uh, condiments and little hooks that are quite neat for maybe the old implement or tea towel. Hob is just a two burner, but well, that's how it comes. Well, whether you can live with that or not, I don't know. Reasonable out of work top, but what I'd like to see is one of those nice modern three in a line, three rings in a line cookers set back into the counter would have given you more worktop space and an extra ring to cook on. But as I say, you have got the oven and grill and it's not a bad kitchen for storage. We've also got the main socket, 12 volt socket and two USBs. And over on the other side, another main socket and two more USBs. But the best feature of this kitchen is the one I nearly forgot. 153 litre, two door, fridge freezer with automatic energy selection. Now you may have noticed that everything that I've covered so far is come in the habitation door and turn left. What about the washroom, where's that? Well, not only is it forward of the habitation door is the full width of the van and more than a meter of the length of the van. It is palatial. If I had a moggy, I could swing it round in here. It really is. Well, it's the sort of washroom that you see in those massive liner motorhomes that cost two, three hundred thousand pounds. It's huge. And better than that, you can just shut off the cab and then Close it off from the rest of the living area as well. On this side, you've got a really generous shower cubicle, really good space for that. You've got a decent wardrobe with storage below for, for folded clothes. Then on this side, you've got your Dometic toilet, which I much prefer to the, uh, the Thetford one. Basin with a decent amount of worktop, shelving space, storage space, the cupboard, has little upstands to keep everything in place so they don't fall out when you go when you've been around a few twisty roads and then you get to your campsite and you open the door and everything comes tumbling out well that won't happen here even your toilet roll hides in the cupboard and then just pokes through a little slit so if you're a bit splashy around the wash basin you don't soak your toilet roll hey there's even a main socket in here for your hair dryer there's towel rails there's robe hooks there's two roof vents. It's brilliant. So what of the new Fiat cab? Well, as I say, you won't be using this space really apart from to drive. Although they do fit swivel cab seats and I'm not quite sure why, apart from probably it's because people order all their Fiat cabs with swivel cab seats. So rather than complex, complicate things this one gets them too. You get this funky new steering wheel with lots of switches on it for your phone and so on and cruise control. You get cab air conditioning of course as standard. You get this rather nice Pioneer head unit which uh, you've got uh, sat nav, DAB radio, Bluetooth, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, all the modern gizmos on there. What else? Well, as I said earlier, you've got start and stop. You've got these new instruments with the uh, the latest Fiat, but not the full digital display. But they do light up nicely when you turn the uh, turn the ignition. They all go dark when you're parked up and just spring into life when you turn the key, as if the whole motorhome is coming alive. We'll take it for a drive in a minute and talk a bit more about the new cab but one thing you should notice is that with this wall behind you if you're very tall you do need to check that you can get comfortable in this driving seat i'm fine i'm about five foot ten but if you're over six foot you really will need to check that you can get this seat where you need it to be comfortable driving with the new fiat cab it's still just a reach adjustable steering column but there's no rake adjustment that's one of the things I'd have really liked them to have changed when they did the facelift, but hey ho. And you've still got these cheap plastics as well. So, 
driving this new Series 8 Ducato. Well, if you already own a Ducato motorhome, it's all going to feel very familiar. Yep, the steering wheel is smaller. The steering, which is now electrically assisted, is lighter. But other than that, it doesn't feel a great deal different. Uh, this 2.2 litre 140 bhp engine is absolutely fine for this size of motorhome. In fact, I would say it's spot on. Um, I had it down the motorway, down the M5 yesterday, uh, cruising at 70 is for a short space, so just from a short run, and it was it was uh, it was comfortable. Um, you don't need anything more unless you're going to really load up your van and uh, maybe tow a car or something like that. But uh, yeah, not a lot of change really on this Ducato, although uh, Fiat seemed to be telling us it's new. Um, it doesn't feel that new to me. And a lot of the new features that you can get are optional extras. So um, you don't get them on this particular model. Of course, if you go for the ev evidence model, you get the, the new nine speed automatic rather than this six speed manual. Um, that's something that uh, I think everybody would appreciate. The automatic gearbox is, is lovely on the Fiat's now. And uh, yeah, the only other thing to say really, um, apart from to, to mention the spec, you get cab air conditioning, cruise control, stop start, um, all the standard. Um, the only other thing to mention is it does rattle a bit. Um, the roads around this uh, site at Burnham on Sea um, aren't the best, um, but uh, it does it does rattle a bit on country roads, which is a shame because you know generally it feels uh, feels quite well put together. So, what's my verdict on the new Pilot P696U? Well, the likes are obvious, aren't they? This rear lounge is superb. You've got plenty of space to relax, invite your friends in. Yeah, it's just a really good lounge. And if there's only two of you in the van, you don't even have to faff about making it into a bed. Although you do have to remove, I think it's 10, I counted in the end, of these cushions and stow them in the cab, which is a bit of a pain. Takes away some of the simplicity of dropping that bed down, but I shouldn't complain. That bed is so much better than making a bed from cushions. And it comes down nice and low, and it's a good size. It's a really, really good bed. So that's another big plus. But the big surprise is the washroom. That is perhaps the star feature of the whole van. Downsides? Well, of course, you've only got a two burner hob. Some people will probably struggle with that. You have got an oven and grill though, and you have got a huge fridge freezer. Storage? Hmm, can't quite make up my mind on that one. You're gonna to want to put your bikes on the back, um, not faff around with trying to turn these, this seating area into a bit of a garage at the back. But yeah, you've got the outside drawer, you've got storage under here, um, you've got some decent top lockers in the forward part, obviously not under the bed. Yeah, so storage is, is reasonable rather than superb. Uh, what else? You're gonna to have to check out that driving seat if you're very tall. And while you're taking it for a test drive, maybe listen to see if this, see if they all rattle as much as this one. But overall, again, there's a lot to like with this van. Now, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, like of course and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and if you're looking for a rear lounge motorhome why not watch our review of the rapido 854f as well and if you like the look of pilot why not watch our review of the p696d a little bit shorter front lounge rear washroom but again quite a practical quite a spacious van with a drop down bed and no fixed bed, making it very comparable to a lot of UK models.
Thanks for watching.